Okay, the kind of balance we're going to use to weigh this doesn't really matter. It depends on what your instructor has available at the time. We're going to use an analytical balance. So let's go ahead and tear it out and put a zero, zero it. Now we're going to go ahead and just weigh each of these. Now this is the aluminum block and we're also going to get a density, sorry, a volume of this so we can get the density. So, but we just go ahead and stick it on and then we record all the available digits off the balance. We don't estimate it, we just copy down exactly what we see there. Then we're going to go ahead and take that off. Just to be sure, we'll zero it again. And then we'll put the glass sphere on, which is going to be basically a marble, really. And then we'll weigh that as well, and again, weigh it to all the available decimal places. Now, if you're using a analytical balance like we are, then make sure the door is closed uh, for each measurement. This is the part where we're going to measure the volume of this aluminum block. Now, we're possible to measure this volume because it is a regular shape. It's a, basically a rectangular prism. And we're just showing you here how to measure one dimension. That'll be the length. And you can see that we're using a ruler here. And if you look at the ruler, we've got 0, 1, 2, 3, and you can see that. But between each of them, there's 10 graduations, which means each of those little lines is worth 0.1. In order to determine the precision to which we can measure with this, with this device, what we do is we take the smallest graduation, which is 0.1, and we divide it by 2. So it would be 0 0.05. So any measurement we make of this block is going to have to be to two decimal places. Now in this instance, you can see that the aluminum block has to be set up so that it's on the zero line at the end. Could you point that out please, Jim? All right, so he's pointed that out, and then you can see we measure it to the other end, obviously. And that is going to be, what do you think, Jim? Around 7.40? Or is it sort of in between? Uh, it looks like it's, it looks like it's 7.50. Okay, around 7.50 then. If it was a little bit less, you could say 7.45, but in any case, it's going to have to be to two decimal places. And then you'll measure the other dimensions in the same manner. Now something to keep in mind, make sure we're using the centimeter side, the metric side of the ruler. Do not use the inches side. Alright, excellent. So we're going to measure the volume of this glass sphere here, which is effectively just a marble. We could do so geometrically uh, if we knew the diameter, but we don't have any calipers. So we're going to measure the volume by using the displacement of water. So what we're going to do is we're going to add uh, about 15 mils to this uh, graduated cylinder. It doesn't have to be exactly 15, uh, but it does have to be certainly more than the volume of the sphere that we're measuring. So he's going to pull this, pull this up close to the camera. You can see what the graduations are like, and between 10 and 15, for example, you can see there's five lines. That means each of those lines is worth one milliliter. So what that means is we can have an accuracy of 0.5 milliliters. So if this is directly on the line, what did, what would you measure that as, Jim? Uh, about 14.5? Yeah, about 14.5. Yeah, so if it's, 14, if, if it's just below the 15 line, in between the 15 and the previous line, the 14, I would call that 14.5. If it was exactly on the 15 line, it'd be 15.0. And remember what we're looking at here is the bottom of the meniscus. So he looked at that and he saw that the bottom of the meniscus was about 14.5. Now what he's going to do is going to add the, add the glass sphere. Now take it back a little bit. Take the camera back a little bit here, sorry. He's going to add this very carefully. He's not going to just plonk the, plonk the thing in there. He's going to, he's going to put it in slowly. There we go, at an angle. There we go, perfect. So we don't splash any of the water out either or break the graduated cylinder. So then we will re-measure now what the new volume is and the difference then will be the volume in the, uh, of the glass sphere. So we've got these two burettes here. Uh, they have one has more volume in it than the other one does. It's kind of mimicking what we do with a 
burette, we start at, at the top, then we let some out, and then we me measure the, the difference in between where we started and where we finished. So when we are using a burette, what happens is we're actually measuring the empty space, which is really just a difference between where we start and where we finish, and that is the amount of material that ends up being added or dispensed into whatever vessel that we're using. I'm going to have Jim bring the first one down so we can look at the, the first burette here. They should be labelled A and B. And I'm going to try and pull this in here and show you what the measurement looks like. There we go, that's, that's great. Okay, you can move your hand now. Now move it down just a little bit, there we go. So you can see there's our, our measurement here. It's between one and two. You'll notice it numbers downwards because we're measuring empty space here. And just move it down just a tad. And you can see here that it's between one and two and it looks like it's on about the, the between the third and the fourth line is what I would say. So I would measure that as being 1.35. Now each of these measurements, you can put that back up now, each of these measurements is worth 0.1, which means we can measure to a 0.05. Now, if it happened to be exactly on the line, the fourth line, it would be 1.40, but it'll always be measured to two decimal places. Jim's going to go ahead and grab the other one here. And of course, we're just mimicking the difference here. Perfect. So it's between 27 and 28. It looks like it's on about the ninth graduation, so it'd be 27. Point nine zero would be the measurement I would put down for that. So in this part of the experiment we're going to measure the density of water and what we're going to do first is we've actually filled this burette pretty much to the top but it doesn't have to be to the top and we're actually going to let a little bit of it out because we want to make sure that there's no air bubbles in the bottom there. And there, was, there were a couple. And there were a couple so it's, in, it's important that we make sure that that's not that's not going to be an issue for us. Now the, uh, what that means is we're not actually starting at zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a measurement, you saw how we took a measurement earlier, and that's going to be the initial volume that we'll start with. So that's, uh, that, that will be written down into your lab book. And what we're going to do first is weigh this 25 or 50 milliliter, in this case, Erlenmeyer flask. So he's zeroing it, he's putting it on, and he's going to measure all to all of the available decimal places. All right, so we've got the initial mass now. That's great. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to add about five mils of water. It doesn't have to be exactly five, but we do have to know exactly how much we are adding here by taking measurements at the beginning and at the end. Now we've already, we've already got the initial We've already got the initial measurement on the burette, and Jim's going to add about five mils. So what's it at? It's about three it's and a bit. Three, yes, yeah. yeah, so he's going to take it down to about eight. And I'm making sure the tip of the burette is inside the flask. Right. All right, it's a little past eight, but that's okay. Yeah, that's good. As long as we know exactly how much we'll get, you, so you'll measure, you'll take that measurement, you'll write it down in your lab manual, and then we'll weigh it. There we go, and we get a complete mass of that. Now we're interested in just getting a running total here, folks, so there's going to be no subtractions done between trials. So we're just going to take that measurement, we've got that mass, write it down in our lab manual, and we're going to come back over here, and we're going to add another five mils of water around about five. So what's it at? It's about, right now about nine and a half. Nine and a half. So he's going to take it down to about fourteen and a half. And then he's going to take it back over and he's going to weigh it again. Notice he's using a top loading balance here as well to do this experiment. And now he's going to take that measurement, he's going to write it down in his lab manual. And we're going to repeat this process again. So now about 14 and a half. Yeah, take it down to about 19 and a half. We're going to do this five times, right, Jim? Yeah, so this is the third edition. Yeah. It's about 20, that's fine. About 20, okay, cool. All right, so that volume will be measured, that will be written down, and this 
mass, again, will be taken. But you don't subtract between trials. All right, let's go ahead and put it back. We'll do one. Yeah, good. We're going to do another one that here. That was the third. That was the third edition. Yeah, this is the fourth one. This is the fourth edition. So go to take it down to about 24, 25, something like go. that. Good enough. Good enough. And of course, you'd be recording this accurately at this point. Yes, yeah, you'll record it. Yeah, whatever it is, to two decimal places every single time. And then we'll weigh it again. Notice I did not tear the balance in between. Yes, he didn't tear the balance in between. We're getting a running total of the mass here. That's great. Thank you. And this should be the last edition. Yeah, last edition now. And again, we'll get an accurate measurement to two decimal places, whatever volume that happens to be. Then we'll pull that over and we will do the mass again. Again, no tearing between additions. It is important that if, when you do, if you're doing this experiment that you have your balance readily available so someone else does not interfere. That's right. 